This is the ball game on NorthJerseySports.com. Brought to you by an all-purpose limousine. We'll take you for a ride without taking you for a ride. Back on the ball game, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey Sports. I am Corey Doviak, and today I got an interesting addition for you. Normally we combine, uh, concentrate our coverage on what's going on on various courts, fields, and everything else. Today we're going to turn to a museum. Because the Super Bowl is coming to the New York tri-state area, and because it will specifically be at the MetLife Stadium down in the Meadowlands, uh, we're going to talk about an interesting exhibit that will be held at the Meadowlands Museum, the Meadowlands Historic Schoolboy Exhibit at the Meadowlands Museum, and I have two guests with me today that are going to explain a lot more about it. This is cool stuff. If you are a North Jersey football fan, as I am, you certainly want to get going to want to get yourself over to the museum as soon as it opens up to the public to check it out. But let me introduce our guests first, and first is the president of the Board of Trustees of the Meadowlands Museum, and also the Rutherford Borough historian. He is Rod Leith. Rod, thanks for joining us here on the ball game. It's my privilege. My pleasure to be here. That's great. Well, we got a, I got a lot of questions to ask you, but first let me introduce the president of the Rutherford High School uh, Athletic Hall of Fame and a friend of mine. He is Tom Potter. Tom, what's going on? Uh, not much, Corey. It's good to talk with you, and I'm glad you could uh, you know, give us some time here, and it's a, it's a pleasure to, to speak with you. Yes, and I just I, want, I would like to re-mention the disclaimer that I gave you before we came on the air, air here. As a Palisades Park kid who played Rutherford in various sports throughout my life growing up, I do this through gritted teeth. I got killed by Rutherford so many times. What do you have to say about that? Well, you know, back in the day, I was just fortunate enough to have some good athletes, and, and uh, Pal Park at the time, you know, you guys <laughs> had some good athletes, but we were just a step ahead at that point. And, be gentle, um, Tom. Be gentle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was certainly competitive, and we enjoyed the time, and, and it was something that uh, we certainly uh, look look back on it with uh, with smiles. Uh, All right. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about the uh, Meadowlands Historic Schoolboy Exhibit. Now, the the museum itself is located at 91 Crane Avenue in Rutherford. The exhibit opens January 29th, runs for four days. Uh, at the museum from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And, Rod, what are we going to see when we show up there? Well, when you come into the building, you're going to be greeted by a, an array of historic memorabilia that goes back to the early 1900s, but it especially focuses on standout football legends uh, from our area, and our area is Rutherford, Passaic, Lyndhurst, and, of course, extending over to Inglewood to St. Cecilia, Lombardi's uh, uh, Saints. And uh, you're going to see uh, a variety of uh, wonderful images, photos, uh, trophies, banners, uh, vintage footballs and helmets uh, that will show you what football was like when it was being played by these uh, legendary teams in our area. We we really have a rich history, and we're, we're very, very proud to uh, to show it here at the Meadowlands Museum. Absolutely. Going all the way back to Lombardi and all the way forward to guys like Corey Wooten and many others who have come through that area of uh, North Jersey. Tom, how, how great is it, you know, A, that the Super Bowl is coming, that it, it, it opened up the opportunity where – North Jersey, specifically the Meadowlands area, can really, you know, crow a little bit. It has a great athletic tradition, and, you know, the world is coming. The football world is coming here to, uh, you know, northern New Jersey. And just talk about that opportunity for, you know, you guys down there. Well, you know, Corey, when we looked at uh, the whole situation uh, with the athletes and the, and the legends that, that have gone through the South Bergen area uh, and then have gone on to the NFL uh, and actually, you know, we've had, you know, the Bob DeMarcos from St. Mary's and Jack Tatum from Passaic and Stan Walters, also at St. Mary's, have had the opportunity to play in the Super Bowl. Uh, we just thought it was a great connection to display the uh, amount of um, credibility of, of high school football players in our area uh, that have certainly uh, gone on to bigger and better things. And, and we just uh, want the, you know, the, the world 
You know, yep. the world. We want the world to know that uh, not only is New Jersey, but also uh, North Bergen and South Bergen area have been great for high school football uh, for a long, long time. And, and that was one of the uh, missions that we had set out to, to set to uh, display to everybody. And I think uh, it will be displayed uh, very well, and people are going to enjoy the whole exhibit. All right, I got the same question for both of you, Rod. Starting with you. What is the coolest piece from your perspective? Uh, you know, if you had to pick one to show, what would it be? Well, I have to say that I, you know, I'm thinking about uh, what uh, what Tom has just said. I, I am just amazed as a historian because, you know, I'm not a football buff and I'm not a football, I'm not, not a big major football fan. I enjoy the history and I enjoy the legends. I have to just say that I I am amazed to see what has come out of our area and, and what we have produced, boys that have gone on to be captain of the Notre Dame team, boys that have gone on to Marshall, boys that have gone on to Fordham. And then, of course, we have the guys that went into the NFL. So without picking out any particular individual, I'm looking at them as a group, and I have to tell you that Vince Lombardi is there. You know, he, he looks like he's in real life because his photos are, are in the exhibit, but he is in good company, and I think he would be proud to be among some of the guys that we're showing off in this exhibit. How about you, Tom? Something stick out to you? Corey, the thing that sticks out the most is uh, back in the day, back in the, in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, about how much football meant to not only uh, a high school but to a community and to an area and about how it was just – you know, something that was uh, happening, and everybody went to it, and that was displayed by the, you know, the photographs that we have with, with 10,000 people coming to games uh, back in the day and having uh, newspaper reports and, and all-star teams for the All-State and, and the trophies uh, that they gave back then um, are really, really neat, and it, it just shows you how much uh, football meant to those people back in the time and uh, how the, the school just revolved around their football programs. And that really sticks out to me the most. Yeah, and the cool thing about it is, you know, when you're going back that far, that's pre-NFL. I mean, there was professional football in some standing. But, you know, you think NFL now, you think of the $9 billion a year machine that's on, you know, four days a week and, and this behemoth of, you know, American sport. Back then it was really – and, Rod, you know, as a historian, maybe you can, you know, speak to this a little bit, but it was kind of just love of the game at that time. It was absolutely love of the game. I mean, uh, Tom mentioned the, the number of people who would go out for these. Uh, they would travel by trolley with these teams <laughs> to the area schools to attend the games. They would be anywhere from six to 12,000 spectators at these afternoon games. Now, we are talking Crazy. about a much smaller population than today. Right, and, and it was a hassle to, to get there. And, and it was a hassle to get there. But they would go nonetheless, and they would be there, and they were proud of their teams. And the newspapers, the newspaper reporters, the sports reporters would be there, and they were just really enthusiastic. And I have to say, when, when Rutherford would go up against the sake, it was on page one of the newspaper. Right. That's, how, that's how amazing uh, the following was of this sport. Back in those days, we're talking about, you know, the 20s, 30s, and 40s. Other than, you know, this interview that you're doing here with me, which I uh, greatly appreciate, what's been the recept or interest from other media outlets? I know you've got had a lot of interest, so you have to be fielding inquiries from all over the place and, you know, just talk about the hype that it's generating. Well, actually, it's quite interesting, uh, the response we have gotten. Uh, for example, the Monogram Club at Notre Dame is putting it on their website. They were quite thrilled that we were doing this. Marshall University did a story for its website and, uh, and interviewed me. They were very, very excited about it. The NFL Network is coming to look at it. Uh, and we've had, of course, the area media. We've had the, uh, the newspapers and electronic media. We had uh, Channel 12 uh, news. Channel 12 for New Jersey, Channel 12 in yep. to uh, to look at our exhibit, and we've had uh, the newspapers in taking photographs. So there's there's great interest uh, it, that we've found. There's quite a buzz out there, and we're, we're really hopeful it's going to create uh, some audience for us. Yeah, Tom, I mean, you know, those things are all great. NFL Network, Notre Dame, blah, blah, blah. But you got NorthJerseySports.com on the line here. And, this and is you know what? That's that's the one we reached out to first, and <laughs> I'll be quite honest with you. You know me. As soon as we were talking about this, 
I said, well, I'll, I'll mention it. I'm getting this to Corey, and I want to get it and, and give him first dibs on this. Uh, well, a note to self, mark down the time of that comment and pull it out and use it in the next show that I do, that's for sure. Uh, you, you mentioned, you know, Rod, you mentioned Marshall University, and, and the local connection there is obviously Teddy Shoebridge, the standout from Lyndhurst High School, who was, you know, unfortunately killed in that tragic plane crash with the Marshall football team. We do a show here in the spring called The Track Show, uh, and we had Teddy's brother Tom, the head co- longtime head coach at Lyndhurst, uh, track program on talking about that and, you know, ways to keep his brother's memory alive. And, I mean, we, we talked about it. He, he talked about the effect that that incident had on his mother. I mean, obviously, you can imagine the effect that it had on the entire Shoebridge family. I mean, I was getting choked up talking about it to him then. And to me, this just makes me happy because he said that more than anything else, he wanted to keep his brother's memory alive. And now with the world, you know, the football world coming to North Jersey, they're going to get to see a little bit about Teddy Shoebridge as well. Yes, and his and his co player, his co his co teammate, uh uh you know, uh, is also part of this too. Uh we can't Marcelo forget Lanterman. uh Marcelo Lancherman. Right. And uh and also at the Sake High School we, we we're not forgetting Arthur Harris. Uh he was also on that plane. So yeah, this exhibit and thanks to uh people like uh Tom Longo and our sports uh historians from Passaic Al Margerosian and uh, Tom Smith, Ron Smith rather, are are helping us to to bring this uh, memory alive, and uh, we're very proud of uh, to be a part of that. That's great. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm stopping by between January 29th and February 2nd. Now that we have done this interview, I'm going to go as a fan. Uh, I, w- I want to see it. I'm a high school sports junkie. It's what I do with my life, so uh, I am definitely interested in getting in there and, and seeing it. So let me mention it once again. The Meadowlands Museum, 91 Crane Avenue in Rutherford. Uh, four-day exhibit, January 29th. It begins every uh, the four days after that from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., open to the public then. If you love uh, North Jersey high school football, that is the place to be when the Super Bowl comes to town. So, Rod, I thank you very much for you know giving us this insight and giving us a couple of minutes of your time. Well, thanks so much for having us on, Corey. Really, I really enjoyed it, and uh, it's been a real pleasure. And, Tom, I, I mean, okay, well, I guess we'll bury the hatchet now. Ed Corbejian <laughs> could shoot a little bit. Brian Gassion could dribble. I get all that. So, uh, you know, th- thanks for bringing this to my attention. Thanks for setting this whole thing up. And we'll run it on NorthJerseySports.com. And I just want to congratulate both of you on, a, on the great job that you've done here. Well, Corey, I appreciate the uh, the effort that you reached out for us, and it's great to have you and uh, – we certainly enjoy those. No Jersey sports. Follow the leader.